Good afternoon, friends. It is Wednesday, September the 15th, halfway through September 2021, and this is Wednesday Inspiration from North Congregational Church in Farmington Hills, Michigan. I am the Reverend Dr. Mary Biedrin, and you can always go to our website, northcongregationalchurch.org, to learn more about our church, its ministries, its missions, and how you can become involved. These Wednesdays, I've been looking at, uh, for the past number of weeks, at one set of verses from the Bible, the verses about the fruits of the Spirit. So we've been thinking about all the different ways that the Spirit of God bears fruit in us, brings forth in us what is best for us to take into the world, makes us into bearers of these fruits. And so I'm going to put up that scripture. I'm going to read it one more time. Paul was writing and contrasting the law and the fruits of the world with what the fruit of the Spirit is. And he says, by contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these things, says Paul, there is no law. So we've been thinking about the ones that are characteristics like love, joy, and peace, and the ones that are practices like patience and kindness, generosity, and faithfulness. And now we come to what I think might be the hinge for all the fruits of the Spirit, because it is one that is the biggest fruit. It is the one that is the most complicated and difficult to grow for us as human beings. And it is also the one where we most need the Spirit's help for this to be true in our life, for us to have genuine self-control. Now, self-control is something I think we all know what it is. It is not putting our emotions and, and our immediate reactions at the front of things. It is setting aside and instant desires for longer-term gains. It is offering yourself an option to not be reactive and instead to be responsive. It is many things. We all wish for it. We all have times in our life when we've had it and times when we haven't. They say that self-control as a characteristic of humans starts forming between the ages of three and five. And as many of us know, it kind of abandons us for a little while between the ages of about 13 and 18 when impulses and desire to try things and our passions kind of rule the day. And yet self-control is something that even the oldest and most wisest person that I know would tell you that is something that is always a struggle, that we are always working against our basic instincts that are to fight or flight, that we are always struggling with the things that we want, even if it's not a good idea, that we are always fighting our own tendency towards complete self-interest when what God is calling us to is to be other interested. And so self-control is necessary, right, for us to feel patience and kindness and generosity and faithfulness, but it is also lies at the heart of peace and love and joy, because without some sort of self-control, with just an unbridled self doing whatever we feel like doing, it is hard for us to have those things. This is God's desire for us that we have all of these qualities, and these are gifts of the Spirit, but they are also gifts of the Spirit that we can call up within ourselves, that we can combine with our own desires to do better and bring out into the world. So in a little bit, I'll give you a chance to think about how self-control is a fruit of the Spirit in your life. But in the meantime, I'd like to think a little bit about all of these fruits, about this whole collection. I'm going to put up the words again in a different version. And gentleness is bigger just because that's the one from the gentleness week. Now it's because it's more important. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these things, there is no law. Against these things, there is no prohibition. God is not trying to say, have less of these things. In fact, God is trying to say, have more of these things. These are the things that will allow you to live a life that lives out the gospel, a life that is good news for the people around you, a life into which the Spirit can flow and out of which the Spirit can flow into the world. So what are your issues with self-control? We often 
pick up magazines in the grocery line, and boy, oh boy, they are full of stories of people who need diets, people who are angry, people who are out to get each other, people who are living wild lives. They are just a, a tabloid bonanza of the lack of self-control. It's not always so interesting to say, you know, a woman holds in her temper when speaking to her children, and yet any of us who have had to do that know that it is epic, that it takes a lot of effort, that it is something that every person, and especially people in the Bible, struggled with. So think of King David, who could not control many of his urges, who could not control his temper, who could not exhibit enough self-control to raise his children to be people who would not rebel against him in armed conflict at the end of his life. The Bible is full of examples of people both who have these traits and who do not, and they're a good point for us to begin, but the place where it really needs to rest is with the Spirit of God. And so, in just a moment, I'm going to put on Pat Butler playing Be Thou My Vision. Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. And I'm going to allow you to listen to that and have a little bit of contemplative time. And I'm going to put up some prompts once again, just three of them, about self-control in your life. So think those over as you listen to this music, and then we'll be back for prayer. As I looked through those prompts, as I thought about the issue of self-control in my own life, I want to just remind us that our instincts, our desires are not in themselves evil. It is when they harm others. It is when they blot out our compassion. It is when they make us ungracious. It is when they drive us away from one another instead of into reconciling relationships that our passions, our desires, the things that we seek to control when we say we need to have self-control are aimed at. And so how does self-control come forth as a fruit of the Spirit in your own life? Where do you find yourself struggling with self-control and what is your prayer to the Spirit about self-control or things that I all ask you, maybe even after this is done, to continue to think about? 
Right now, I'm going to ask you to join your hearts with mine in a time of prayer. O gracious God, your spirit has come upon us. It flows through us. And like a vine nourished by the spirit's own life, by the spirit's own vitality, we bring forth fruit from that spirit. We bring forth fruit from what you desire for us. We bring forth what it is that you have made us to be. And so, O oh God, we ask that you lift up in us the gifts, the fruits of love and joy, of peace and kindness, of generosity, of faithfulness, so that we may exhibit these things, and that you give us the self-control, so that instead of using these things for our own sakes, we instead use them for the sake of the world. We pray for this world today, O oh God, for all of the places that are disrupted by people listening to their own desires, for all of the places where people strive against one another, for the times and the situations where people do not care for one another compassionately and, and, and with love as they should, but instead strive against, undermine, ignore, neglect. Oh God, there are so many ways in this world that we need you to come in and show us how to be God-controlled instead of self-controlled alone. And so we pray in that same spirit for the poor whom you have trusted to our care, for the hungry whom you have instructed us to feed, for the thirsty whom you have said we should offer a drink of cold water, for the homeless that they may be housed, for the helpless, the last and the least, the refugee, the orphan, the widow, but also all people who are in difficult situations, who are living with catastrophic circumstances, and we pray for the hopeless, whom you have instructed us to live, to bring alongside ourselves, to share the good news, to help them sit in the darkness and perceive where the light will come from. Oh God, we pray that you will give us the wisdom and the courage for the living of these days, for these times, and for these activities. We pray also for those who are sick, for those who are getting well and for those who are just getting sick, for those who are awaiting the results of tests, for those who are looking for cures, for those who are hoping that treatments will work, for those whose answers are discouraging or disappointing, for those for whom there are no more cures, O oh God, hold them close, close, close in your heart, so that they know even when their bodies are not healthy, their souls can still be well. And we pray for those who are bereaved, bereaved most recently and bereaved in ways most longstanding. Do not let grief overcome us, O God, but also help us to learn from grief so that we may live more truly and more kindly and more gently because of the lives that have gone before. Open our hearts and our minds to all the possibilities of love, to all the possibilities of these spiritual fruits that we have claimed, and help us to have the self-control to listen even to the messages that are difficult, to do even the work that is hard, to do the things that may not directly benefit us, but which will benefit your people. Give us enough faith to share around, O oh God, and some for ourselves too, as we pray for our own needs, for our own desires, for the things we hold deeply in our hearts in a moment of silence. God of all creation, you have made us in your image. You have given us hearts and minds. You have given us spirits that can feel all of the compassion that you wish for the world. And so we ask that you help us when we fall short of the goal, when we turn away, when we do not remember that we bear your image, when we do not recognize your image in one another, and instead help us to see times where we may love most truly, where we may care for one another, where we may see the beauty of each person with which we share this life in this beautiful world, so that we may see ourselves as people also who are worthy of love in spite of our flaws. Oh God, you have promised us so many of these things. You have sent your, your son Jesus, your embodiment of yourself, into this world so that there is no experience of ours that is beyond your experience. And so we pray to you the way that he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the conclusion of our study of the fruit of the Spirit. I hope that you will continue to bear fruit from this study and from the gifts of the Spirit. Next week, I'm going to start in on four weeks about the Beatitudes, about the blessings that Jesus wished upon the most unlikely of people, the blessings that Jesus wishes upon us, as we are also the unlikeliest of people. And in the meantime, I wish you God's blessing, and may God be with you till we meet again.